Long time no see guys, uh, has been a while since I uh, left because I was really preoccupied with preparing all my job interviews and my um, personal practice coding problems or whatnot and today I want to uh, introduce to um, a problem that I was asked to solve for a important um, basically so yeah this was you know one of um, the inner questions that I uh, had to solve and I want to just share with you so the question is just like this and I'm gonna code it up in Java you don't have to code it up in Java you can probably use Python C++ or whatever language that you want to use in a real place but I was asked to write pseudocode on the whiteboard so between numbers 1 to thousand if the number is divisible by 3 then print the uh, string foo if the number is divisible by, divisible by 5 then print bas if the number is divisible by 15 then print foo bas otherwise print the regular number so 1 2 foo 4 bas foo 7 8 foo bas 11 foo 13 14 foo bas so this is sort of the way we think about it first of all I'm gonna show you um, how to do it in brute force algorithm and second second of all I'm gonna like show you um, you know a better or efficient way to do it so let's first think about how we do right so we probably should definitely say um, public um, hmm public class main because that's the idea uh, that's sort of the name of this kind of class main.java as you see it here up front and then say public static void main string args this is just regular convention of java meaning that the, every time you run the java code everything in java is basically encapsulated meaning that um everything is you know basically encapsulated and as a class so once you run it then this main function we're going to be run now there are four major properties or concepts in object oriented programming and I was asked to re uh, reply that concepts as well the first is called abstraction second one is encapsulation third is called polymorphism the fourth is called inheritance abstraction means you only care what it does but not how it does second of encapsulation everything is basically wrapped inside of class like nested dolls and each class or property each class contains its properties and um its own traits and fields and values or whatnot. Uh, third of all, the encapsulation, I'm sorry, the polymorphism is a way of calculating something even though their data types are different. So if you sum it up together, you can either sum it up or can get into two strings or two integers. It doesn't matter. And then the fourth one, inheritance. We usually use inheritance when you deal with out of parent or child class. That was a brief um, sort of catch up for you. And please make sure you are familiar with those concepts because more than likely they're going to ask you what the, those concepts are so I'm going to use to start with a for loop because I want to kind of loop through one to whatever um, thousand and then I want to see how I code it up sequentially meaning that if so how do we know that if certain numbers divisible by 3, the way we know that is we use a mod operator, right? If it's a remainder of the number 3, that is equal to 0. And I want to add one condition here. And if that number is div not divisible by 5, the reason why I add this is later I'm going to keep enumerating every single different conditions. And I want them to be sort of independent so that there hope hopefully there is no common ground overlapping with one another. So if if it divisible by three and not divisible by five, I want to system dot out print ln foo. Right? And else if meaning that I am taking care of or I'm dealing with the following cases as in um, as sort of very independent from previous case. So else if I so it will be the Zor case of this condition if that makes sense, right? So I'm gonna copy and paste this condition. What I mean by that is kind of bit Zor means if it's not kind of flip this, you know, if it's not divisible by three, but if it's divisible by five, meaning that it's divisible by five, what I want to do here is system dot out print ln best. And now how do we capture the instance of foo bass, right? I guess the way you do it is else if I 
is divisible by 3 and if also divisible by 5 at the same time that means that number is divisible by 15 right so I want a system dot out down print ln foo bad okay after that what I want to do is else otherwise what I want to do is I want a system dot out print just regular number there are the four conditional loops and hopefully I close every single braces I did and I want to run this and I want to check the results and what it's returned and everything Java uh, semicolon is expected okay I didn't put semicolon there so it's just saying uh, syntax errors right now just okay there are so many numbers but I'll just scroll up and show you one two three yep there is divisible by um, I mean, like, yeah, number three is about three, so it's foo, bass, foo, let me say 15 if it's foo, bass, boom. How about that? Foo, bass, whatever, then it's check 30. Boom. This code definitely works, and this is how I answered, but the interviewers ask me, hey, can you make it better? Meaning that can you sort of decrease the number of this conditional so that this code can run more efficiently? I said, yes, but how do we do it? Now, this is the where a little bit of creativeness or innovative innovation or you need to tweak a little bit again what is the commonality every time you look at like certain code after you figure out the brute force you should keep thinking about yourself how can I make it better by finding some commonality so as you see foo bass here oh okay because 15 is both divisible by foo and bass maybe I can use the concept of accumulator accumulating both independent cases and somehow grabbing those and then print it out so the way I think about this issue, there can be, again, many ways of doing it, is first I want to generate an empty string called temp. And every time it loops it, it's kind of like basically uh, repopulate temp because I want to accumulate it every single time. But you need to tweak it kind of a little code. What I mean by that is you don't need this else if, and I want to somehow merge these conditions to the other conditions above and how do I do it now let's first take a look at the first situation if certain number is divisible by 3 and I want to do something as following and I'm gonna delete else if here because the difference between if and else if is, is I mentioned before is else if and if, if I put so if I put else if here these two conditions will never run at the same will never touch at the same time or sequentially it's all the time one way or the other case but if I just say if and if this means if a certain condition meets this and this at the same time then it's gonna run both of them so which can be powerful in our situation that's what we want right if that number is um, divisible by 15 it's gonna hit both line 34 and line 37 so that's what we want and I guess that this was it if my memory is correct and but it was not because again now we think you should think about if divisible by 3 that's good now let's think about the case where if it's divisible by 5 right but before that we want to sort of <clears throat> sum it up integer how do I do this? I'm trying to figure out. Foo, yeah. We want to print out temp here. And again, if it's also divisible by five, we want at this time keep accumulating the string bass, and we want to print it out temp else or else if right if that I mod three is not divisible by three and that is mod 5 is not divisible by 0 meaning that there are neither of these cases I want to just print out that I but here we got a kind of big problem first of all let's kind of throw out some test cases so if the number is 3 6 9 or whatnot or um, here I'm gonna like writing 12 just to help you understand you guys a little bit if I were to say, okay, so 3, 6, and 9, or whatnot, if they're purely just divisible by 3, it's going to hit this loop. It's not going to hit here, right? So, which is fine. But let's think about the case where, like, 5, 10, 15, 
20, 25, which is the second case. Then they're obviously, most of them are obviously not hit here, but in the case of 15, it's gonna hit here and it's gonna print out just food, which we don't want. So what we can do here is I'm gonna add another if statement and says, hey, if a certain number is divisible by three and if that number is not divisible by five, meaning if just this, what this basically means, if that number is purely just divisible by three, then I want to just system that print out. Otherwise, I don't want to print. So that's what this means, basically. So if this, this is a three, then like three, six, nine, twelve. But if there's like a fifteen in that case, it's gonna hit this line, and it's not gonna hit this line, which we want because we want to also accumulate bads and print it here. Does it make sense? So let's try around this. Now we have sort of less accumulator statement. And let me see. One, two, three, food, four, five, bad, da, 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 da. Boom, that works, right? So every time you all the time, like it's all the time good for you to practice a lot of problems. But before you practice, you should all the time um make how can I make it better? Because efficiency of algorithm is everything. Constructing algorithm is everything. It's all, it, you know, it's everything about figuring out how can I make it better. So that's the point of today's video, and I hope you enjoy it. And please subscribe to my channel. Please leave some comments, and I'm more than happy to share off my all my interview questions before. And surprisingly, they're not going to ask you too hard questions unless like the companies are prestigiously centered on software development, but. I do believe that uh, it doesn't hurt you trying and coming up with, you know, practicing a lot of different types of algorithms. I hope you have a great day and thank you very much.